coming on Grace Point. Hey, it's your boy P. C original, not Pastor Chris, Pastor Colton here with you guys. Hey, I just want to tell you I love you. It's another beautiful day in the big city of Monroe. We are currently in my office. I've got a wonderful, wonderful Grace Point member and a guest here that's going to share her heart uh, with you. And I'm going to introduce her in just a second. But today, for the first time in the history of To The Point podcast, we got three people on here at once. Three people. I'm bringing in, I'm bringing in one of the big guns y'all today, y'all, and then uh, we're just gonna dive in and we're just gonna talk and we're gonna hear a testimony from one of my friends, my family's members, my family's members. Katie Whitaker is here. Hey, Katie, why don't you say what's up to everybody that's listening? Not a whole lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever. We're gonna get into that in a little bit. You got a ton going on, and then I got Boss Lady, Commander in Chief. Well, Commander. Commander-in-Chief's PJ. But then Commander, I would say, is Sister Debbie. She's here. She uh, she gets us to stand at attention whenever she walks into the room. She's got seniority. She's here. She's going to be pitching in on this conversation, too. Um, so thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this. I know that God's going to speak through Katie's testimony. So, Katie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Colton. It's already not what you expected, right? Mm, uh, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Well, you were expecting the camera and stuff like that. We stopped doing that. So, for everybody that's listening, the reason that we stopped with the whole video and the whole camera is it took too long to produce, and it took too long to edit, and the whole point behind this podcast was just to be simple. Hey, let's have a conversation where somebody can grow and get better. So, Miss Katie... We want to know who you are. So just tell us, okay, if we were meeting for the first time, if I don't know you, tell tell us who you are. Tell everybody listening who you are today. Oh, gosh. Um, well, I... You have I'm a husband a and two kids. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Okay. Well, yes, I am married, um, and I have two beautiful boys. Um, Brilliant boys. They are very, very. Smart. They're smart kids. They are. They get yes. that from you and your husband. <laughs> yes, there is some disagreement on that, though. Oh, really? But it, it, we won't go there. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm 32 years old. And I've, I'm an only child. Um, Where are you from originally? I'm from uh, Halton, Louisiana. Halton. Mm-hmm. I've heard of Halton. Where's that at? It's in the Bossier, Shreveport okay. area. Oh, okay. That's it's just right. Just a small That's right. town. Yeah. Sort of before you get to Bossier. Big city girl. Huh? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got you. Okay, so when did you come to Monroe? How long have you been going to Grace Point now? Um, we came to Monroe, I guess about five or six years ago. Uh, we started coming to Grace Point. We, like you and Cody? Yes. Okay, okay. So, we, I got a job in Monroe. Yeah. About six years ago, teaching. And then, so that moved us. To this area and then we were looking for a church and at the time um well i I would say at the time you know everything was new i'd never i don't know that was my next question and so cody was more familiar with monroe because he's from winsburg yeah but um we started i just walked in i did well i visited a couple of churches in the area and this church, I don't know what drew me to this church, but I walked in and I was actually by myself. <laughs> Cody was not with me, but that's a different part of the story. Um, I walked in and I don't know, I just immediately knew that this, I felt the pull of the Holy Spirit. And yeah. I knew that this is where that's what it was. I was about be. to tell you, that's what it was that drew you to this church. Yes. But that's cool. Yes. So, first Sunday, what did you, what did you, what did you think? Um, well, it was kind of funny, but um, what PJ was saying last night at service, um, how the the way he talks, yeah. the the every time he says something, the, hey, hey, 
you know, like when you have a non Pentecostal. Oh, look, he's um, gotten a lot of. Well, no, I wouldn't say in. flack. He's heard. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people say. You know, your pastor says, ha, ah, between every yes. word he says. And I'm not going to lie. Like, oh. the message, the worship, the message that first day I came in was awesome. And I felt the anointing oh, in yeah. the house. Yeah. Like, I knew that the presence of God was there. Yeah. And I had been to a lot of churches throughout my life, mostly that were not Pentecostal. And so I have different experiences with different denominations. Yeah. And this was my real first experience with that type of... Um, Type of service, worship, environment, yeah, yeah. yeah, and so, um, I just loved it, but it made me laugh last night because I was constantly noticing every time he said something, I noticed it, and I was like, "Oh gosh, I don't know if I can." Is this? Am I going to get used to this, or am I going to just constantly be hearing that yeah. every time? <laughs> but after a while, I just it just I didn't notice it anymore. So yeah. that was kind of funny, but um, and. The environment, as far as the people, you know, I was noticed the first day I came in, um, and that was before it really grew to uh-huh. what it is now. Yeah. And the environment has gotten even better as yeah. far as like people knowing who you are and wanting to get to know you. Yeah. Pastor John made a point to talk to me that first day, I believe. I don't know. It was just yeah. It was like home, like yeah. whatever. But what most people say mm-hmm. when they come to Grace Point, it feels like home. It feels like family. Yeah, and that's that's the core. I mean, and we are getting bigger, and we try so hard to keep that culture of hey, we're all family, and we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. Why? Why do we do that? Well, because that's scripture, right? They, I mean, yeah. in Acts chapter two, three, and four, it said the believers met together, but they were every day, but they had everything in common. Uh, they were there for one another. They were selling everything they had to pay for ministry, pretty much. I mean, mm-hmm. everything. So they could be together. Yeah. Um, so it is family. Uh, you don't go through life alone at Grace Point. And I love that. And PJ's done a great job. I've mm-hmm. heard so many testimonies. PJ, and, uh, Pastor John hugged me walking out for the first time. And no pastors ever hugged me. Stuff like that. Yeah. That really um, just just lets people know that. This is this is different here. This is a family. Yes. We care about you uh, physically, but more importantly, we care about your soul and what's mm-hmm. going on with your soul. Absolutely. So that's awesome. So after your first service, you call your husband. What well, you tell him? There's this wild place on Auburn Avenue. There's a <laughs> bar right across the street from it. it wasn't wild, <laughs> <laughs> but I just told him. I said, "You're gonna have to come with me next time." Because at the time, you know, he wasn't really regularly going to church. And he had been through some some issues with childhood church situations yeah. and religion. And so he was kind of distancing himself from that. And yeah. so I said, well, I'll, I'll just go see if I can find something. Then you can come with me. Yeah. And he, tr- he at the time, he trusted my opinion because I had been I had been going to he church. He doesn't know? Well, he, <laughs> he's learning to. Kidding. He's I'm learning to. But, um... Oh. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you go time. through things. Yeah. You go through things, and it just makes you guarded. Yeah, and, for you sure. And, know, you have to work through those things even in a marriage. So, yeah. you know, and then yeah. as soon as he came that first time with me, he was mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. This is where we need to be. That's awesome. So, so Holy Spirit led you here for sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. That's so wonderful. So, were you, um, were you raised in a Christian home? Did you go to church? every week or what made you say well yeah i mean because most of us you know most of us in the south were raised every sunday but there are those cases where where kids don't have parents to take them to church but still the holy spirit draws them so what what boat were you in so that kind of is a big part of my testimony and how it kind of got started because i did not grow up in church um well, first of all, my parents got divorced when I was very young, when I was two. Yeah. And so, you know, that uh, growing up from that um, was challenging for me. And then also not being grounded in a church at the time as mm-hmm. a young child mm-hmm. um, made things more difficult for me to deal with. Um, but both of my parents grew up in church Mm -hmm. and then things happen in life and you know they were they had fallen away right and so at one point I don't remember how old I was 
but my aunt and my cousin had been going to church regularly. And so I started just going with them. Yeah. And to an Episcopal church, which is very different from a Pentecostal church very in terms of not to say that it's not a, yes. Yeah. Not to say that it's not anointed, but you know, different different places feed different people. Yep. And so yep. when I was a young child, that was my first exposure to church was in an mm-hmm. Episcopal church. And it didn't take much for me to realize there was something missing in my life, that there wow. was something I needed. And this mm-hmm. was before I was 10 years old. Wow. So I don't know, all of a sudden, and I truly give God the credit for it. He put in my spirit, you know, that my cousin, there was something different about her. They yeah. were going to church. She was just a nice person. Like, just these good things. And I just felt like something was missing in my life. Yeah. And so then I started going to church more regularly with them. Yeah. And then... um, And that's just a testimony. Let me me just stop you. I mean, that's just a testimony. I talked to a guy last night. Buddy, and if you're listening to this, hey, hey, we literally just talked about this, bro. (laughs) He was like, how do I witness to this, this friend of mine who wants nothing to do with Christ... I said, they, they see something different in you. I almost said his name. I was, they see something different inside of you that draws them. They see a hope, a joy, a peace, a love, a patience that isn't found anywhere except in Christ. Right. And that is the most powerful sermon that anybody will ever preach is the way you live your life. And that's your testimony. Yes. You were attracted to Christ from your cousin. I love that. Okay. All right. Go on. But we were the same age yeah. and both very young. So the the manifestation of her relationship, I don't know exactly when she was saved, but her relationship from what I could tell was very, the manifestation wasn't extravagant, mm-hmm. which tells me that, that, that I was just, the Lord made me extremely sensitive yeah. to the Holy Spirit yeah. and that it didn't take much yeah. for me to just... And it could have just been him all by himself nudging me toward him. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so after periodically going to church with them, um, my mom remarried. We still weren't going to church. Um, but we did get, we got invited to, and this always sounds cliche, but it's part of my story. <laughs> you tell so, it. Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames. Oh Are yeah, you all familiar with those? No, plays? I mean I've heard about them. In the ba- I don't know if it's a Baptist thing because that's where I was introduced to it. Was yeah. in the ba- was in a Baptist. It's a play, church. right? It is a play. A play, yeah. A drama. Yep. Um, and <laughs> we got invited as a family to go to that, and yeah. I had didn't know what it was about. Yeah. And but when it started, I was like. What have I stepped into? This, I mean, it was intense. Yeah, yeah. And can be the source of a lot of fear, mm-hmm. you know, and it can kind of scare you into pursuing Christ. Wow. You know, which yeah. I don't think, you know, that's not the way God works. Okay. You know, a healthy fear and a reverence is one thing. Right. Mm-hmm. But in my situation, watching it, as soon as I saw the person who played Jesus and I saw the difference yeah. in those people who met Jesus and those people who didn't, mm-hmm. it was more of a it was more of a love that embraced me rather than a fear. Okay. So I mean I did have a little uh, you know, like yeah. I don't want it I don't want that to be me going the other direction. Yeah. But at the same time it was more of I just want Jesus. Like yeah. that that was what was spoken in mm-hmm. my heart was that's what I want. That's yeah. what I'm missing. That's awesome. Well, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people have come to Christ through plays like that. And I don't I don't necessarily think that it's wrong to be to want salvation because you're afraid of hell. Don't think that's wrong at all. But I think that there's more that Christ wants mm-hmm. for you. What do you think, Miss Debbie? Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. But I believe that a lot of people say, yeah, I don't want to do that lake of fire. No, I, you know, like scares, scares the, I was about to say it. I was about to say it to Katie. You get scared the H out of you, didn't it, Katie? 
<laughs> for real, I mean it did. PJ would have said it, y'all. He really he would have. <laughs> Ronnie Ree would have said it. Scared the H out of you. Um Well, and I would argue that if you're if you're all you're feeling is fear and the Holy Spirit doesn't put fear, that kind of fear in yeah. you. Yeah. If all you're feeling is fear that pushes you toward that, then how genuine is your acceptance of Christ? Yeah. Of who Christ is, not mm-hmm. just because of the destination. Yeah. Heaven versus hell. You know, like, are you accepting the relationship mm-hmm. with Christ? Or are you just accepting the yeah. save me from the fear of yeah. going to hell? Yeah. Well, I mean, that kind of is like a maturity thing, too. Mm-hmm. So with your kids, I mean, they're not going to want to get on a roller coaster ride that would be a lot of fun, maybe because they're scared because they're young or something like that. But then they grow up and they realize that, Okay, maybe there's something better. I I don't know. I'm I'm trying to like illustrate it, but I, I get where you're coming from. Well, for and sure. that's why I really feel like it was God. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I it was, was the love. By love. Yeah, and that's I awesome. wasn't pulled by. I'm just freaked out. Yeah. And so I, when they did the altar call, without hesitation, yeah. I stood up. I was ten years old. Mm-hmm. I stood up. I went up to the altar by myself. You feel your heart just pounding. Pounding, but pounding. to me, it was like I was, it was like I was floating. Like, yeah. there, I was, and I was a scared child. I was a mm. worry wart. I had anxiety, and that stems from a lot of things, I feel yeah. like. But, you know, like, that was, I was a shy kid. Yeah. So for me to step out in a church full of people that I didn't know without my family going up with me, mm-hmm. like, that was all Jesus yeah. drawing me to the altar. Yeah. And I accepted Christ at that point. And from that point on, you know, yeah, that's when I kept, I wanted to be closer and closer and closer to Jesus. Yeah. And that's, that's what I did. That's beautiful to me. Uh, one of the, I mean, I love this podcast because you, I mean, everybody that I talk to, I see God's hand in their life. And they just, I mean, they, you can look back and see God's hand mm-hmm. in your life, even in hard times. And it's hard to in that moment, but you get a little bit more age on you and you can look back and oh, just absolutely. see the grace and the mercy of God. And you talked about being drawn to him, being drawn to him. And that's not just you, Katie. That's everyone. Let me read this in Romans 1. It's one of my favorite, favorite verses. It says, uh, Romans 1, 19, for what can be known about God is plain to them. He's talking about the Romans because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine Nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in things that have been made, so they are without excuse. It's talking about the ones who, if you keep reading, they didn't acknowledge God, so God gave them over to their evil desires. Uh, and it was talking about exchanging you know, unnatural sexual relationships, mm-hmm. men and men, women and women. Mm-hmm. Um, but it says they had no excuse because you can look at this beautiful world that we live in and know that there is something more to life than just what we're living. Yes. There's something bigger out there. There mm-hmm. has to be a creator out there. Um, so that's cool. And I believe that everybody, everybody, no one has an excuse. Uh, right. Everybody has that nudge at a time in their mm-hmm. life. Well, that's cool. We'll keep going. We are testimony. I'm going to try and stop um, talking uh, so much. Well, let me just go to, let me go to this. Okay. A few months ago, the the whole reason we want to have you in here a few months ago, um, that we had uh, miracles every every Sunday, multiple miracles miracles in the altar, and I believe you were one of the first. Um, you were set free from depression, and it was crazy because your look changed. Mm-hmm. Like that, like that next week when I saw you, like you could just tell, like like this was a different woman than it had been, than I had known the year prior to that. Mm -hmm. So you shared some of your testimony and it got put up online, but let's, I wanted to talk about that a little bit more. So you said you've struggled with anxiety since you were a child up until the moment where you had that breakthrough in here in service, or what would you say? Gosh, Mm, it's a long, (laughs) it's a long journey. Um, yeah, I, Struggled with, like I said, I was a very worried child. I was a very anxious child. I worried about everything. And some of that, some of that I think I was predisposed to from 
like genetically because of the way my mother was. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, some of it I think was also spiritual. Um, mm -hmm. And because I had those tendencies, you know, the, it was a playground for the enemy to toy with my head. Yeah. Before I even really knew what it was or how to deal with it. Um, and it got progressively worse. I mean, of course, after I accepted Christ. Yeah. It was something that I battled with even more. Mm -hmm. um, probably more on the spiritual side than anything. But that being said, the anxiety, the worry developed into depression. And it was kind of a cycle. You know, I would get worried and then I would get depressed. And then okay. I would get more worried and that kind of thing. It was a cycle. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. They're, it's related. Um, and so I struggled with it on and off throughout high school. Um, college, it kind of came to a head because um, I started having a panic attacks, mm -hmm. like where I thought I was going to die, mm -hmm. no doubt. <laughs> I had to get on medicine to bring mm -hmm. me out of that. And that's when I realized, you know, when I was younger, like I said, I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know how to deal with it. So all I could do was just crawl inside of, inside of, I'd crawl in my bed. Yeah. And I didn't know how to deal with it. And then, I, like, as I got older and it came to that, that point when I was having those anxiety attacks, that's when, and I had a relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. you know, from 10 years old on, you know, I got prayed for. Mm -hmm. by pastors spirits broke off of me yeah. so that that's where like the spiritual aspect of it I was more aware of than the physical aspect of it Okay. because I had been taught that spirits you know there's a spirit of anxiety there's a spirit of depression you know and you can have those spirits broken off by the Holy Spirit and that right. happened to me several yeah. times but then something else would happen and it, it was never permanent right um, so it was just a, it was a constant struggle. Um, and then, uh, I had tried medications through, you know, through all of that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it helped and then I would get off of them because I was good and then I would be okay for a while. And then something else would, I mean, it was just like, you know, some of it I think was stress triggered, yeah. but then there were times when I just felt, I felt ways that, and I was just. Like, why? There's nothing going on right now that should be making me feel sad. Yeah. You know, and so for me, it was like finding a pattern became really difficult. Mm -hmm. And knowing when it was spiritual mm -hmm. and versus when it was physical, yeah. you know, it was difficult. And, you know, that day that um, Pastor John prayed and I was delivered, Yeah. you know, he made a point to say, you know, you need a healing, which tells me it's a physical, physical. Yeah. problem, not a spiritual problem. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was like, that day I wasn't expecting a healing. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't. I, I, I'm going all over the place with this. There's not a, there's not a track I'm on right now, but I'm just kind of speaking what's coming to me. Yeah. I had gone up to the altar that day, um, to be closer to God. Right. That was it. Mm -hmm. Like, and that was every time I go to the altar, that's, that's my desire. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you know, and at that point I had become okay because I had struggled with depression for so long and I had tried medicines and gotten off, gotten off mm -hmm. of them, gotten back on them. And then there were, the longer that went on, the more I didn't want to be on medicine. And so I refused it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once I got to college, I um, tried alcohol to numb it, yeah. even beyond that. When I was in graduate school, you know, like, because it just, it made me feel better mm -hmm. for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, you know, it was like an even deeper slump mm -hmm. than what I was in before. And so I went through this cycle of drinking mm -hmm. and, um, you know, my family I have family members that struggle with that. And so I had gotten that influence as well. Like, let's, you know, drink to yeah. numb your whatever. Yeah. And so, anyway, um, 
and I had tried counseling too and it just wasn't doing for me what I felt like I needed yeah. and so that day that I got healed I had come to a decision in my mind that and I had talked to God about it you know we had had a I, I would tell people you know this is what I struggle with I struggle with depression but I would tell them but but I know God's got it yeah and I just I had talked to him about it you know help me Lord I had poured out my heart to him and something in me just told me he's gonna he's gonna do something yeah now that was years ago that mm-hmm. I really started feeling that mm-hmm. but it never manifested and so that day <laughs> I had come to a decision that I was not gonna take medication and I was not gonna the day that Pastor John prayed yes. for you, before he prayed for you, or after he prayed for you? Well, let me go back. So, like the, I guess the months leading, the few months leading up to that day, yeah. I had decided, you know, God, I struggle with this. I don't know. I don't know why, but I'm willing to live with it if it means I don't have to take medicine mm-hmm. and I don't have. To, I basically, I had gotten to a point of desperation where. Yeah. I will live with this if if it means not relying on things other than you. Mm-hmm. So I had decided medication was not going to be a part of it. Yeah. So when I walked up that day, you know, I was just doing what I normally do. Right. But in my heart, I had just come to that point of mm-hmm. basically, God, if you don't do it, yeah. I'm just going to live with it. Yeah. Because I'm not going to do anything else to try to... Yeah. Solve the problem because it's not going to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. And I really think that that was the difference mm-hmm. is that, and I could be wrong, but in my heart, I really feel like the Lord saw the desperation in me. Yeah. Well, I think that's backed up by scripture too. I mean, you see multiple people throughout the gospels who once they had finally been desperate enough to do something about it, um, that's when Jesus said, it's your faith that's made you whole, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you think of the lady with the issue of blood. You talk about a bad deal and mm-hmm. couldn't do anything. And every time Pastor John met, uh, mentions her in his messages, yeah. you know, and I feel like she comes up a lot. Yeah. It, it's a different issue <laughs> it than is. what I dealt with, but the years... That she dealt with it. Yep. I just, I don't know. I ha- I feel a, a spiritual link yeah. to that story mm-hmm. because of the length of time she dealt yeah. with it. And then becoming so desperate yeah. that, you know, I just want Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's really where I was. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, what's awesome about it, though, is that God has given me favor. Yeah. Through the years of mm-hmm. struggling, mm-hmm. you know, whereas I could have just stayed in bed yeah. and dealt with it that way, mm-hmm. like I made myself get once well, I learned how to deal with it. That's the point I was going to make too. Yeah, I made myself get up, yeah, get out of bed, yeah, you know, like meditate on who God says that I am, yeah, on the Word of God, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember the scripture exactly, but the one that says. Um, that he hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That scripture changed my life, and I had to proclaim it constantly, and I still do, you know. But those kinds of things, like knowing that one day I was going to, God was going to take care of me, no matter what I was struggling with. Right. That's awesome. Uh, and that was the point I was going to make is you kept showing. I was going to try and get on my phone and look that up, but it's on airplane mode right now. So okay. I can't look it up. Is it Ephesians 5? Um, what is it, Miss Debbie? Or is it First Timothy? It's First Timothy, I oh, think. Oh, there you go. I think one, uh, maybe one seven. Mm-hmm. First or Second Timothy, I think. Oh, well, I'm just going to look it up. But what I wanted to, the point I wanted to make is even through all of that, you showed up. And you would still be in the middle of all that and probably a lot worse off had you not shown up. So that was, the, I love Thomas because Thomas had some serious doubts about who Jesus was and that he was even resurrected from the dead, but he showed up. 
-hmm. He showed up. And because of his faithfulness to get to where other believers were, he got a miracle. He got Mm -hmm. to touch Jesus' hands and put his hands in his side. And I love that. Listen, if you're struggling with anything, don't stop showing up to the house of God because there are other people that have gone through and are going through the same things you're going through. The devil's going to lie to you and tell you you're all alone. There's nobody like you. Keep showing up. Katie did it for years and years and years before she finally received breakthrough, before she finally received her miracle. But you were there at the appointed time. And that's what's so important. So what would you share with everybody who may be facing that? Other than what I just said, what would you say to them? (laughs) Gosh. um, Just be faithful. I mean, that's really what got me. (sighs) Go ahead, let it out, girl. (laughs) That's really what got me just walking was, you know, like, even though I struggled with it, I knew how faithful God was. And I knew that he had been faithful to me even through the struggle Mm -hmm. because he still gave me success in everything I did. He still allowed me to bless other people with, you know, words or whatever it is like he he almost would move my emotional state to the side and so that I could bless somebody else and then of course I you know later on I ended up going you know still dealing with those issues but he gave me favor in the middle of it Mm -hmm. and so I knew that even after you know 20 years of struggle he had been faithful to me and so that wasn't that was reason enough for me to just remain faithful to him yeah. and faithful to his house. And one day I would receive healing, whether it was here or whether it was in heaven. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, you know My grace my, is sufficient for you. That's exactly right. And that yeah. verse right there, yeah. Grace is is something that I've learned has gotten me through so much stuff. Yeah. And so now it is like an anchor for me that the grace wow. of God yeah. is what gets me going yeah. every day. And that's, I mean, that that's what Paul was saying was, hey, I have something going on in my life too that I feel like could be holding me back. It's a thorn. It's, it's pestering the fire out of me. God, I prayed three times. Jesus, please take this from me. He said, nope. My grace is sufficient for you. You have to rely on me more because of that. Um, so that's that's awesome, and I love that God did it. And I wanted to share, I got two verses that I wanted to share, and this one came up. Now, this uh, verse came up with Pastor Chelsea and I a few weeks ago, um, but I love this, this passage of Scripture. Um, it's Galatians 5, um, but I'm going to start in Galatians 4, 8, because it kind of goes with Galatians 5 1 it says formerly when you did not know God you were enslaved to those by nature uh by uh, those that by nature are not gods but now you have come to know God rather or rather to be known by God how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world whose slaves you want you want to be once more You observe days and months and seasons and years, and I'm afraid I may have labored over you in vain. In five chapter or uh, chapter five verse one, he said, "It's for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Stand firm and do not submit to a yoke of slavery." So we're not just free right now, but we're staying free Mm -hmm. by the power of Jesus. By the power of Jesus. So that's awesome. Um, Katie, is there anything else you want to add? Yes. <laughs> yeah, come on with it. There's, so the other thing I would say is um, once I was healed, and I don't remember if I mentioned this um, in the first testimony that I gave, I didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel like a weight had been lifted off of me necessarily. When he prayed, I felt, 
I felt God yeah. do something. I mean, you just, when you feel God's presence on you, you just know yeah. something's going on. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel like, you know, I was joyful and, you know, like, right. I didn't really know how I was going to feel once the Lord delivered me of it. Mm-hmm. But as I was driving home that day, I continued to feel heavy, mm-hmm. like just heavy. And I was, I told Pastor John, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I said, why am I still feeling this? Mm -hmm. Like I don't, and I, I was driving home and I was, I was questioning God and I was like, look, I know you did this, but what is going on? And I feel like he literally told me, I want you, I'm letting you feel the, the weight of what I just took off of you. Wow. So that you know that whenever it goes away, it's going to be a dramatic difference. Wow. And I mean, and it took, uh, well, it took a couple of days for me to feel that. Mm-hmm. But like that night, I looked in the mirror and I, my identity had changed. Yeah. And that's, that's what's so detrimental about depression is that it becomes ingrained yeah. in who you see yourself mm-hmm. as. Yeah. And so I had gotten, every day I would wake up and look in the mirror and just see it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's an ugly thing to look at. Mm-hmm. Not that I am, but you know, the, w- until you've dealt with it yeah, and you, you just, I'm going to yeah. be depressed for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like that, it becomes well, an identity. You identify, you give it power. Yes. When you identify with it, you give it power. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, when you come to a point of just feeling like you have to submit to it mm-hmm. because it's there and it doesn't feel like it's going away. Mm-hmm. You know, what God did for me that day was I could look in the mirror and not see it. That's awesome. And my, I, you don't get that really I until don't, you but deal with yeah, it. Yeah. And it's, it becomes detached from you. And so I would also say, yeah. like, don't let, don't let depression, the emotional aspects that you're dealing with define you give you identity Mm -hmm. because that and that's another reason why I stayed close to God yeah because I was drawing my I was trying to get identity from him and from what he said about me Mm -hmm. despite how I felt and so not being not submitting to the feelings and Pastor John talks about that a lot you know don't your feelings are different from who you are right and so Mm -hmm. Trying to push forward despite your feelings was what I had to do yeah. constantly until he completely removed the thorn, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And that was a big thing that I had kind of thought, you know, maybe maybe God is letting me deal with this so that I would rely on him. Mm-hmm. And I did. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I continued to rely on him Yeah. the more I struggled until mm-hmm. I got to where I was like, I'm yours, God. I'll deal with this, yeah. but, you know, I'm not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing anything. You are, you are all that I know can solve this problem. Yeah. Now, do you, do you believe that God wants to heal every, everyone who's depressed? Do you believe that God can can heal that person and set them free like he did you. Yes. Yes. I believe he can. Yeah. I do think uh, because of the length of time that I dealt with it, you know, I it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I was looking for a healing years ago. Yeah. You know, but I had to wait and I had to wait and yeah. I had to wait. And you know, whenever it's the right time, it's going to happen. Yeah. And that's what you have to know. And then until then, just know that God is going to use you. Mm-hmm. Or he's going to, you know, like, because of grace. the... Yes. Yeah. The length of time that I dealt with it now makes me realize mm-hmm. that despite it, mm-hmm. God still used me. Yeah. And um, I guess made me realize how sweet being delivered, being free is Yeah. because of how long, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And I can help other people Yeah. who are dealing with it because I've spent so much time and I think with you, it. I think you have. <laughs> yeah, I think you have today for sure help people who are dealing with it. And uh, one of the things you just talked about, 
the time is going to be different. I heard a pastor say this this week, and it was hilarious. He said, God, God owns everything except a watch. So mm-hmm. he don't own That's a watch. Exactly right. He yeah. is because he's always on time, but he's not on our time because he's outside of our time. That's right. right? He, said, mm-hmm. he, said, uh, he said, I gave God a watch one time, and then... Uh, he just threw it in the ocean. He said, you, you heard of scuba divers, like always finding watches in the bottom of the ocean. He was like, those are watches that people give God that he just chunks in the ocean. It's like, I, I don't wear this. <laughs> he owns everything except a watch. So just because it ha- hasn't happened today, doesn't mean that it won't happen tomorrow or this right. afternoon or, right. or, or next year. So I love that, Katie. Thank you. That's a powerful testimony, a powerful testimony of 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 staying of of staying power uh staying power because a lot of people you know after 3 months praying seeking God God still hadn't healed me I'm bouncing I'm out you know God isn't who he says he is but you've proved that God's good all the time even in the middle of of bad things going on and so. I think learning that you know seek not only seeking what God can do for you but seeking who he is. Yeah. That that was a game changer that's, that's for right. me too. Is that's right. He's done so much for me up to this point. Yeah. He pulled me out of a pit when yeah. I was 10 years old and saved me yeah. in an environment and that was not saved. This goes back to that whole heaven and hell thing that you just talked about. Not what he can do for you, seeking him not mm-hmm. for what he can do for you, but but because of who he is. Mm-hmm. You know, we get saved because we want to go to heaven. But we get, we get a relationship. He becomes our Lord when we we get to know who He is. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, cool. Well, you ready to end on a fun note? Sure. All right. <laughs> I'm a little nervous all right. Now. <laughs> so, um, if all of the angels are in heaven, you show up. You walk up to heaven. What is going to be your walk-in song? What what song are they going to play? What song are they going to play when that. you walk through the gates of heaven? Are they going to sing, Mama, We Made It? I think that's a rap song. <laughs> Mama, We Jordan Made Armstrong It. Jordan Armstrong does one. Who? Jordan Armstrong. Well, there you go. This We well, Made It? That's made probably going to be it. Well, there you go. Yes. There you go. We made it. It's going to be a pop we song. We made it. It's going to be a Christian uh, pop song. I think if I had to pick one, it would be Look At Me Now. Hey. That might be a rap song. Look At Me Now. Hey. You know Is that what I'm talking Christian about? Is that Christian rap song called? I don't even think it's Christian. <laughs> Look at me now. Because it says the next verse is, I'm getting paper. Okay. All right. Well, hey, to the point, we love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Miss Katie, hey, if you see her, hug her neck. Tell her thank you for uh, taking some time out of her studying for pharmacy to uh, do this. Because she didn't mention that. She comes up to the church like every day of the week now to study for uh, tests, exams, all these chemistry crazy things that pharmacists do. I but, was going to say I'm in pharmacy school. but She's in pharmacy yeah. school, everybody. But tell her what's up. She is here at Grace Point <clears throat> every time the doors are open. Uh, and we love her. So y'all show her some love. Thank you, guys. Hey, if you've enjoyed this, please like it, subscribe, share this with other people, and let God move in their lives. God bless you guys. See you next week, homies. Bye.